A scream was heard through the crowd. It called on not removing the Ukrainian flag. On March 1, 2014, the Russian flag was raised on top of the building of the Donetsk Regional Administration for the first time. And two days later, the administration building was seized. Tetyana Durnyeva is one of the first who was not afraid to go out the next day with a Ukrainian flag and declare that the Donbass is Ukraine. In a couple of hours, a few thousand more like-minded people organized on social networks and took to the streets. People were very bright and very happy. We understood that there were many of us. Before that, people never went to rallies on their own. On March 4, 2014, a rally held near the Holy Transfiguration Cathedral in Donetsk became the beginning of opposition to Russian occupation of the Donbass. Donbass Ukraine! Donbass Ukraine! On March 5th, about 10,000 people came to the main square of Donetsk. Rallies for a united Ukraine were held until the end of April. After that, it became too dangerous to take to the streets. In Donetsk, local residents noticed an increasing number of people with a Moscow and Rostov accent in Russian. These people were brought by buses and gathered at pro-Russian rallies. An evidence of it was people with different time on their watches, lines of people changing rubles for hryvnia in the currency exchanges, and an ignorance of the area. For everyone who lived in Donetsk, it was obvious that these people were not locals. A severe clash occurred during the rally for a united Ukraine on March 13th. Pro-Ukrainian activist Dmitro Chernyavsky and dozens more were injured that day. People took stones, brass knuckles and armor. On both sides, the attack was made by only the pro-Russian activists, and the Ukrainian guys defended themselves with what they could. Every day, starting in February of 2014, Serhii Kosyak kept a diary where he wrote down everything that was happening. He was one of the organizers of the prayer marathon in the center of Donetsk, which lasted for 10 months. From time to time, priests were attacked and occupiers threw their Ukrainian symbols and posters into the river. These cases were so frequent that we had a car nearby and a rubber boat in it. And when they threw the posters away, we took out a boat and swam and took them. Later, we wrapped them with tape and made them vandal-proof. Every day, from 50 to 300 people went to prayer, but in March it became dangerous. People were going missing. During the marathon, 17 people were held captive by the militants in basements around the city. Religious scholar Ihor Kozlovsky recalled how they tortured him. He spent two years in captivity. All these tortures lasted a long time, many hours. Militants replaced each other because they were tired. I remember one of them shouted that the Russian world came here, that they were representatives of the Russian world. The main accusation was that I took part in the pro-Ukrainian rally in the prayer marathon. The analytical center of the Donbass Factory of Thought, with the support of the Ministry of Informational Policy, has released a number of documentary films about the facts of Russian occupation. They plan to show them at various sites. We say that the Donbass fought not only for five years, but it still continues to fight. We want to appeal to the president of Ukraine to make March 5th the day of civil resistance to the Russian occupation. A media marathon on the resistance of occupation in the Donbass will be held every month until June. Reported by Yulia Bashko, UATV.